Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker by way of a toast to the men with S.D. Booker. We got a special, special guest today. Man, the inspirational, the motivational, go-getting entrepreneur, the homeowner's insurance guru, Marcus Igiobor. Let's give this man a round of applause. Hey, how you doing, folks? I'm great, cuz. I'm great, fam. How about you? I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yes, people, I did say cuz. that This is my cousin. And, uh, man, I'm proud of you. I just want to give you your flowers right now uh, in front of the Thank world, you. man. Thank I'm proud you. of you. You're doing some big things, man. So, uh, Thank you. Thank yeah, you, man, for, for, for both of us to come from uh, single-parent homes and the hood and uh, not use that as an excuse, as a crutch, uh, says a lot, man, about character. So I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, same sentiments, man. All love. No yeah. doubt. So one Definitely. question I like to start off with, with everyone, with all my, my, my guests is, if you were, uh, well, I, I, re, I reworked that. If an alien was to hit Earth and come in contact with you, and you had to explain yourself, who is Marcus Igiobor? Who is the homeowner's insurance guru? Okay, okay, I like that one. I, uh, I would say I'm the insurance guru now that we've expanded to different markets and you know, uh, different versions of asset protection. I would say, you know, I am a most high fearing uh, serving of all uh, walks of life, um, individual who seeks knowledge, seeks information, seeks, uh, understands that, you know, we've all been given a gift here and I want to use my gift the best I can to serve and leave a mark on this earth so uh a helper i will call myself that a a server server too that's that's pretty much what i'm about wow wow that's you know i i, I don't hear that often server to leader yeah i don't hear that often um now you're into homeowners insurance you provide insurance for homeowners what led you to this point can you give me a bit of a background of what led you to this point to where uh, you're providing insurance for homeowners? Well, just being a property owner initially, when I, whenever I had an opportunity to have my first piece of property, uh, your home is your sanctuary. So it's probably the most intimate uh, part of an individual's life is where they lay their head. Um, for me, it just, asset protection. Whenever I had a home, my first home, I experienced any and every catastrophic incident that could possibly happen with the property. We're talking about from flooding to uh, leaky roofs, to varmints in the house, to foundation shifts, any and every inconvenience that you can ever imagine. So um, my uh, passion just to help people um, led to that asset protection and understanding how to how to protect myself and knowing that hey if I'm having this issue I'm sure there's a lot of other individuals out there experiencing the same thing with the lack of information and you know you mentioned earlier being raised in a single household uh, I do have some empathy for uh, women who who are juggling different different uh hats and may not have the information to to uh, protect themselves or their families so uh i jumped into the insurance world i learned i became a, became a student of the the industry i still am a student of the industry you know as i observe new changes and uh new laws every every day um and uh just had passions to, to just 
give that information to the masses and, you know, and realize that it's a lot of individuals that do not know how to protect the property. They know how to buy a property, right. but they don't know how to protect it after they're in it. Right, right. Now you yeah. said something, uh, something I want to touch on and expound on. You said when you purchased your first property. Now, this has been an old debate, um, home ownership versus renting. What what is the best thing going right now? Do, do you do you have a preference? What is the logical, most economic decision to make right now for people to rent or to purchase? I would say definitely purchase. Okay. Uh, ownership gives you leverage. Whenever you rent uh, anything, it's not yours. Uh, you're paying a fee. Right. You're paying a fee, and essentially, when you leave there. You know, everything, every penny that you put into rent or, or anything else towards that that uh, location uh, is obsolete. Uh, with this market, you know, this real estate market, especially in Texas, is booming right now. Uh, a purchase of property will uh, immediately come with equity, depending on uh, your advisement. So uh, with that said, you purchase a property uh, five years ago, let's just say two hundred thousand dollars. That same property could be worth three hundred k, and let's just say you're paying fifteen hundred dollars a month in rent. You could actually pay use that same fifteen hundred and pay that to a mortgage. Uh, people are typically like, "Well, I'm not. I'm looking for my dream home." Mm -hmm. And then I kind of ask them, are you in your dream rental? Right, <laughs> right. I would rather allocate those dollars. Yeah, to, to pretty much something that's going to grow, you know. So with that same example, 200K in this market, that same property may be $300,000. So you can sell that property for 300K, profit $100,000, and actually use that on a down payment for your dream house. If that's something that you want to want to still consider so all in the same time with the exact same dollars that you're spending every month wow wow so now when it comes to home ownership and insuring that home can you tell us some of the differences or some things we need to look out for when insuring a newly built home and insuring an older home that's already established yeah absolutely um i would say on any property uh that you're looking at, get an inspection. That's just kind of like getting the uh, information on the house, like a diagnostic on your house. And uh, what we pull whenever we uh, pull a, a report on a property, it's called the clue report. It's um, in a sense, a car fax for homes. Uh, I would say get an inspection for new and older property, existing properties, because the builders sometimes, you know, uh, they miss things whenever they're building a new property. You know, you expect everything to be perfect, but, you know, in this market, they're building up property so fast that there can be a, a, an electrical issue. There could be a plumbing issue. There could be all sorts of issues that you may not think may arise in a new construction. So get an inspection. Um, as far as homeowners insurance for a newer uh, construction and an older construction, homeowner's insurance is not a standard type of deal. A lot of individuals think that, okay, I'm getting homeowner's insurance and um, it should cover everything. Well, if you're an existing, if you're in an existing home, and let's just say that home was built in 2000, uh, there's some, and, and it hadn't had any updates, there's some pertinent things that you may need to know about uh, a house built in that year. Uh, for one, uh, the HVAC system is probably the older model HVAC system. I'm talking about the heating and cooling system. So that's probably an older model. Um, so in 2016, the industry went to a new model. So they're no longer manufacturing those models. So if you get into that home and it hadn't been serviced and it goes out, which I've seen, you have a ten thousand dollar problem on your hand unless you customize your insurance policy and designed it towards 
uh, this particular property. You want to look at certain different uh, criteria, the age of the roof on an existing property, uh, the hot water, the, all of the appliances, the plumbing system. Um, there's a lot of different considerations to uh, uh, customizing the homeowner's insurance policy just to make sure that you're, you're covered because some items, if you don't add them, you're not covered. Right, right. So, so basically, when we make these decisions, man, we need to be thinking logically and not emotionally, and really, and really uh, look at the year the home uh, was built, uh, and and you know foresee or try to foresee forecast the problems we might incur. Yeah, absolutely. You could do that with an inspection. You know, inspections are definitely necessary. I I, I recommend an, an inspection on. If you're if you're a homeowner now, I recommend an I recommend an inspection every year, at least once a year. Okay. You know? Okay. Now I think about a year ago, I sent some business your way. I sent a young lady your way, and she was behind the eight ball on something in regards to her insurance, and she didn't read the fine print on something. I, I really can't remember what that was about, and so she was in a rush to get get some coverage, I believe. What are some of the fine print details we, we need to watch out for uh, when insuring a home? Um, whenever you get an insurance policy, uh, typically when you're getting quotes, they send you what's called a, it's like a binder, that's in short form. Whenever you get a homeowner's policy, your policy is typically about 100 pages. So uh, you wanna look at your exclusion. So you may think something is covered, but there's a, there's a, a fine line uh, of an exclusions. I'll give you for an instance. Uh, I had a customer who had a had a uh, an AC leak. Speaking of AC, you know, AC wasn't working. Um, it was covered. You know, she was like, "Okay, my AC is covered, but it's leaking." Under the exclusions, it covered it, but excluded AC leaks. So. That was an out-of-pocket expense for her. Um, we were able to get her taken care of through through other other means. So you know, the homeowners insurance guru was still going to look out for you, any means uh, <laughs> possible. But uh, at the same token, uh, having an agent. You know, when someone buys a uh, a three hundred thousand dollar house, four hundred thousand dollars house, that and they say, hey, give me the give me the cheapest insurance you can find. I'm like, okay. We'll, we'll look at your rates, but when's the last time you spent four hundred thousand mm. dollars? They're like, "What are you talking about?" So, I mean, if something were to happen to this house, would it be important to you? Uh, would five dollars, would ten dollars make a difference in your decisions if this item was to arise? If you were exposed to these certain risks, so that's what we do here at Insurance Access. We we do uh, asset management, asset protection. Um, we're risk managers. I assess, we evaluate the risk of what potentially could happen. Um, you know, cost is just one, you know, uh, part of, you know, an, an insurance policy. Of course, we want to pay less and everything like that. But when you're spending that type of capital, you want to make sure you want to have that peace of mind. We're not selling anything tangible. It's just peace of mind. The last thing I want is, something to happen after we already discussed it or if we or if you hadn't discussed it you come to me and say hey this is going to catastrophe my house is flooded you know i have sewer all over my house right now and mm -hmm. me to tell you it's not covered you know we were trying to save ten dollars a month remember right right so um, a lot of different variables so whenever i customize a policy uh i'm very passionate about this so it's I, i've lived it i i experienced you know, unfortunate circumstances to where I've had to come out of tens of thousands of dollars and really in circumstance, some circumstances, not even have it at that moment and really had to weather the storm, yeah. you know, almost felt like I was outside camping due to, you know, the events that took place. And, you know, uh, when you have a $10,000 problem on your hand and it's crucial to your uh, livelihood and how you your your standard and your quality of life, um, you at least want to have that peace of mind or at least have that advisement. So I I advise that 
anyone purchasing a house uh, talk to the insurance guru <laughs> or their agent, you know, to kind of just get a consultation before you make this purchase. I know whenever you're purchasing a home, there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of moving pieces, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, whenever you're done with your real estate agent, whenever you're done with your, who's also the trusted advisor, whenever you're done with your mortgage lender who got you the best rate, um, people uh, I've seen kind of dismiss the insurance piece. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my agents in our office, they're like, okay, well, when your house is on fire, you're not calling your real estate agent. You know, I know he's walked you or she's walked you through this, this uh, entire journey. They're your trusted advisor. But after they let go of your hand, essentially you're with insurance access. So it's good to have that point of contact because I've seen circumstances to where customers are livid at the real estate agent or can't even get in contact with the real estate agent because after they made their commission, they're gone. Right. You know, right. Right. So they're, not even that they're gone, they're helping someone else. Right. In a sense, it's not their right. role. So purchasing a home, purchasing any major property, please get in contact with uh, whoever is overseeing that property, you know, to ensure that peace of mind, really. No doubt. And we want them to go to the insurance guru, man, the home insurance guru, Absolutely. Marcus Igiobor. Now, yeah. I know with life insurance, well, depending on what policy, what package you have, you can draw money from the life insurance. Uh, aside, aside from a refinance, can you draw money from home insurance? Uh, homeowner's insurance, no, you, you can't draw money for, okay. from a homeowner's insurance policy. Uh, yeah, I, I've always wondered. Uh, homeowner's insurance is used to, in our industry, is called to indemnify uh, you, which re, which means bring you, return you back to your original state before the catastrophic event happens. Mm. Right, and uh, people think that okay, uh, wear and tear. My garage is rusty; it's hanging off the hinges. Let me call my insurance company to get that taken care of. First of all, there's a deductible uh, in place before you get anything taken care of, you know, um, and you have two deductibles essentially within a homeowner's policy. You have your wind and hail deductible, that's typically for your roof, and it's based on a percentage of your uh, of the value of your home. So if you have a, have you heard um, someone say, hey, I have a 1% deductible or 2% deductible? Have you heard that jargon before? I have not. No. Okay. Uh, for those who 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 have heard that, um, when they're talking about percentages, they're talking about if you have a three hundred thousand dollar house and your deductible is one percent, that's three thousand dollars that will be essentially owed before the insurance pays the rest of the the claim. So, essentially. Um, if you have a, a roof claim, which is probably one of the most common claims on a, on a property, higher ticket items would say if it's, you know, $20,000 to replace that roof, the adjuster estimates that. Uh, the insurance company is going gonna, is gonna to cut you a portion of that check, but they're only going to give you $17,000 collectively because that $3,000 is extracted. Does that make sense? Yes. Gosh, gosh. Yes. So um, a lot of individuals, they also think it's a, it's a misnomer with insurance. They think if I call my insurance company, I got an electrician, I have a plumber that's going to come out. Insurance companies don't send out electricians or plumbers or roofers. They send out adjusters and they assess the, the damage. And, you know, believe it or not, most of them are not really inclined to pay for it. All they do is write checks. That's all insurance companies do. They don't do repairs. They just write checks. Gotcha. So um, to really kind of facilitate you, insulate yourself in the event of an incident to where you do need a plumber, I totally recommend a home warranty. So if something does arise out of the blue, a pipe leaks, your house is flooding, 
your warranty is a monthly payment that you pay. You could call them and they'll come out and they'll stop the bleeding. Yeah. If you yeah. let it linger too long, the insurance company uh, will deny the claim due to neglect. And I think that's about 19 days. They're like, okay, I've had clients call me, hey, I had a hell storm, not a hell storm, I had a, an incident that happened about four months ago. Um, can I get some coverage on that? Well, that, that was four months ago. Mm-hmm. You have 19 days. You, you pretty much neglected the issue wow. at that point, and the insurance company will deny you. Wow, wow. Many people don't even know that. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. That's- so we, we know throughout history, uh, in the U.S. at least, uh, a lot of times when we're dealing with insurance companies, African-Americans or so-called Blacks have gotten the short end of the stick or ne- negotiated wrongly. Do you see that Absolutely. happening a lot that we're just not educated in the where or we're just getting the bad end of a stick in a lot of these deals? Uh, I would say yay and nay. You know, I, I probably couldn't even put it towards a, a culture. You know, you just know what you know and you, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, I would say um, I was talking to a a gentleman yesterday, uh, a couple yesterday, um, young lady and young man yesterday, and they were on Wall Street, uh, income about probably two million a year, and they were purchasing like a, a multi-million dollar home. Uh, they just didn't know. They didn't know anything about insurance. No one has broke it down to them. And with that said, it leaves them vulnerable. Uh, I will say, Due to the the racial climate, uh, you do see um, though some of those insurance professionals taking advantage of of blacks in particular. So I do see that. So uh, that's why I let my customers and my clients know: Hey, look, anything happens, call me first. Mm-hmm. You know, so I can let you know. Uh, I need to be at the root of the issue, so I can let you know what directions to take. Or else you're exposed. It's just like you're you're uh, walking through a four lane highway, right. you know, um, and you're bound to get hit. <laughs> right. You right. know, if you don't make the right move quick. So uh, I, I've seen, uh, I mean, catastrophic events from, um, you know, uh, and I think they were definitely racially motivated, you know, because the the uh, disparity, the financial disparity that we have in this country uh, places a mindset on uh, some of the general population, even if they're not more economically uh, fortunate than some of African Americans, they assume that we don't know anything and they assume that we don't have the means to protect ourselves. So I've seen uh, just uh, egregious things happen as far as in claim circumstances, because the, I would say the adjuster, even up in into management, uh, assumed that this individual didn't have anybody to advocate for them they were a, a young black woman, so they were ignored. They were uh, given the short end of the stick. They weren't given uh, the proper funds to take care of their circumstance when their policy premium was paid at the time. Mm-hmm. So um, that was a circumstance that I wasn't aware of initially. I did intervene into that circumstance and we got all the funding that we needed to immediately because they know that I'm a professional and they uh, understand um, you know, my posture as a broker and what, uh, liabilities they've reached and what the, um, consequences are for them for treating individuals. There's an insurance board, there's the board of insurance that they can be reported to. And then also brought up on criminal charges as well. So, um, We're very, very uh, customer conscious. Education is key in in our business. 
And I think that's pretty much why we've had a lot of the success that we've had. Uh, our, our agency is a multi-million dollar agency at this at this point right now. And um, and I was brought that was brought to my attention by one of the agents, but it's attributed to uh, just care and consideration and empathy for each and every customer in their circumstance, each and every one. So right. Right. I know I went, went around the corner with that question, but. No, no, I understand. But that's that's some good info. Yeah, yeah. So people always have an advocate uh, who knows what they're doing that can uh, come to your defense when you need it. Um, yeah. Now, on this channel, I like to promote entrepreneurship, independence. Now, uh, we talked about the consumer, more so the consumer side of the business. But as far as the agent side, people who are thinking about getting into the industry, uh, but just hadn't taken that step or want to explore it, how, how lucrative is uh, the home insurance industry? Well, the insurance business is, is lucrative in itself. Um, I would say um, the financial service, the financial service business and uh, financial service uh, is the number one uh, wealth building uh, <clears throat> business in the world. Yeah. You know, right under, I, I think technology is next, then maybe real estate or or um, real estate then technology, I'm not certain. I know they're uh, one and two, you okay. know, and that enabled me to kind of do a few other things in real estate, to be honest with you, um, because it's it's a need-based business. It's a yeah. need-based business. Um, you gotta have it, yeah. Anything, you gotta have it. Everything that you've seen that you're, that you're that's around you have been insured at some point, you know, before, you know, before we got it as a consumer, there was some sort of insurance placed on it. Every building that you see, every, you know, um, pretty much everything that you see has insurance on it. Um, our focus is property. And then just even as entrepreneurs, um, we're, we're more so towards asset protection. I'm always going to be the homeowner's insurance guru. But I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners as well, um, because, yeah, you're using your efforts to secure the bag. But if a catastrophic event happens, is that bag still secured? Mm -hmm. You get hit with a lawsuit. Is that bag still secured or do you have to reach into that bag? Or are you covered in your insurance policy to grab $500,000 to keep to hire a lawyer and keep your business running? So uh, entrepreneurship, I would say any individual who was stepping out on their own, uh, protect yourself. Okay. And you do that with an insurance policy. Okay. Now, what are the uh, prerequisites of becoming an insurance agent? Uh, property and casualty um, <clears throat> is a license that you need to take. The general lines, property and casualty, they call it the PNC license. Uh, in the state of Texas, uh, it, it's about 150 questions. You have to, the state of Texas license, the Texas license is called reciprocal. So if you get a, the, the Texas license, reciprocal meaning that you can be licensed in any other state, all 50 states. Well, actually, I'll take that back, except for New York and, and California, because in Texas, we experience so many different climates in Texas that all you have to do is get a Texas license. And if you want to get what's called a non-resident state license, all you have to do is buy it. Oh, all you wow. have to do is buy it. Yeah. But um, when you do get your license, you have to be what's called appointed to a company. You just can't get your license and just start writing insurance. Right. You have to be contracted with an all-state, contracted with a nationwide, contracted with the Chubb, and they call that that contracting uh, an appointment. Okay, similar to an apprenticeship. Bingo. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, man, recently I've seen you out and about, I think this was in Miami, man, Earn Your Leisure uh, event, man. Uh, that was Atlanta. 
It was Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay, ATL. Okay. Yeah. ATL, man. Yeah. How, how ATL. was that, man? How was that? And, and what's the importance as an entrepreneur to network? You all, iron sharpens iron, sharpens iron, man. Iron sharp sharpens iron. That's why I like speaking with you anytime I can, man. It's, it's just we we get so we advance so much in every conversation. You know, shared ideas, um, networking, information, different ways of thinking. Yeah. You know, and um, when you give, you know, if you, you just uh, just just the fortitude of giving and, and, and serving, uh, you're going to get that back in, in any form or fashion. It may not be money at the time. It may be relationship. You may not experience it till five months, a year later. Uh, but networking expands uh, your brand. Uh, and that 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 uh, earn your leisure and best best was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, there's few uh, thinkers that that operate on the vibration that you and I and others operate with. I'm sure you found them few far in between, and the ones that you have found, you kind of stuck to each other like right. like gummy bears, right? No doubt, no doubt. So you know anyone who was actually there. It was a full intention to be there, you know. So being in a room full of uh, just black excellence, really, you know, yeah. full of black kings and queens, um, understanding the notion that uh, we're almost all we have, but we're all we need. No doubt. You no know, doubt. and <laughs> just information, the dissemination of information and shared ideas uh, catapults us to uh so many different levels and uh will really take our generation to the next level the next generation and it's our responsibility to do that and you know getting out of your comfort zone you know helps that it's it's, it's no opportunity in your living room unless you're on a podcast with sd booker then you <laughs> then you you made it <laughs> there you go <laughs> there you go now <clears throat> that's a good segue to this next question, what's next on the horizon for the homeowner's insurance guru? Well, like I said, um, not just insurance for me, not just uh, homeowner's insurance for me. Uh, we've moved heavy, heavily into commercial insurance, uh, business insurance. And uh, one of our, uh, our uh, larger markets that we've been really really aggressive with well i wouldn't say us but just um customer uh requested is uh is trucking you mm. know uh i'm sure a lot of people seen a lot of different opportunities uh you know this information you know goes really really fast on, online you know so uh we do a lot of uh truck fleets we insure a lot of trucking and, um, you know, it's a need-based business, too. You look around your house, everything there was brought in on a truck in some yeah. type of logistic circumstance, you yeah. know. So uh, uh, insurance still the, the, the main thing. Uh, you know, I just drop the home and go with straight insurance guru. You know, home is still my passion. Yeah. Um, and then teaching is just education teaching these individuals, these business owners, how to protect themselves. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what you know, the higher level of education that you've experienced, you only know what you know, you know? I, so I like to create uh, mastermind groups. You know, if I, I don't need to go to school to be a lawyer for, for some odd years or practice for that many years, uh, I'm connected. So just piggyback on, you know, the, the networking thing. I'm connected with a, a good legal team, you know, uh, same with anything else, uh, accountant, you know, so uh, creating a mastermind group. So it's still insurance and uh, I'm a student of it. I, I study every single day, at least at least an hour or two of insurance every single day, you know, repetitively, you know, so uh, just so I can be of service to anyone who who reaches out to me and I can kind of facilitate them. And then I 
same with my team. Teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, people see me as the insurance guru, and you know, I kind of put that out there, homeowners insurance guru. But I, I couldn't operate without uh, a good support system, you know, and uh, definitely talented, uh, smart, effective, efficient uh, agents and and other team members that we have in our office. So. Uh, and then just the support from you too, because I appreciate you always been a support system for me too. I want to salute you, give you your flowers as well. You know, you're a awesome, powerful man, and you know what you've been doing here is is, is amazing, phenomenal. So, oh man, thank you, cuz. Yeah, we, we're always trading yeah. trading knowledge and wisdom, and I appreciate you. Yeah. Now, now yeah, how no can doubt. how can the people follow you or contact you? Uh, you can follow me at Marcus Ikiabor. That at uh, that's my at sign at uh, on Instagram. That's M A R C U S E G I E B O R, uh, and that goes from my at sign. You'll it'll probably come up as the homeowners insurance guru. Uh, insurance access. Uh, that's the name of our company. Insurance access. You can contact me at 214-914-0786. I'm definitely always up for consultations or any type of advice uh, that I can lend to, you know, help your circumstance or uh, help you protect your items, no matter what it is, or or your legacy. You mm-hmm. know, uh, entrepreneurship is, is trending, especially since COVID-19. So um nothing's guaranteed but we we want to definitely secure our circumstance so yeah no doubt no doubt yeah. now i'm gonna wrap it up wrap it up <clears throat> but this last segment man we usually do 10 speed we usually uh say 10 things and you respond with the first thing that comes to your mind this is going to be a bit different though i'm gonna ask you 10 okay. questions so we're gonna test. Got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna test your intellect in the insurance biz. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Number one, which part of an insurance policy describes what property and or perils would be covered by the contract? A definitions, B exclusions, C insuring agreement, D conditions. Uh, I always have to say conditions. Okay. What is the consideration that an insurer gives to the insured under an insurance contract? A, stated benefits and the dates on which they are to be paid. B, the premium. C, a promise to pay for certain losses if they occur. D, a promise to be constituents about the customer situation be the premium all right the ground rules are described in which part of an insurance policy a definitions b exclusions c insuring agreement d conditions uh insuring agreement all right a mutual insurance company is a managed by an attorney in fact b pays dividends to its stockholders c is owned by the insurance d is a voluntary association of individuals that shares and write in insurance contracts for a variety of risks i'm teetering between c and d so I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with D. Okay. Okay. A non-exclusive agent. A represents a single insurance company. B works for a direct writer. C is an independent business person. D does not collect commissions. C an independent business person. All right. Solicitors may not. A, issue or countersign policies. B, sell insurance. 
C, collect premiums. D, sign an application. Solicitors, I don't think they can do any of those. Uh, um, definitely not sign an application. Okay, okay. All right, last one. Which insurance company department is responsible for paying insurance covered losses? A, audit, B, claims, C, underwriting, D, reinsurance? Uh, claims department. Okay, okay. Hey man, I appreciate you. Uh, Cause I, I appreciate your time man. I'm honored. Is there anything you want to leave with the people? Uh, appreciate you too, cause uh, just know know what you what you have going on in your circumstance. Know your business. Know your property, uh, and protect it. Protect it. Se secure your circumstance. That's it. There you go. Secure your circumstances. Hey, it's all love, cuz. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. And uh, we'll be in touch, bro. Indeed. Have a great one. All right, you I'm too, glad. man. Respect. Love.